Okay, how's everybody doing? So uh, here's the Three Sisters vignette in place right here by the grain elevator. As you can see, the top of the tree actually touches the very top of the ceiling panel uh, in the lighting valance. I'm okay with that because my aperture view right here is deliberate. I don't want to see the tops of the trees. So, um, you know, even in real world life, you know, we pan around, but uh, our peripheral vision sort of deletes out a lot of that sort of part of the view that we see things and uh, I really like the way it works here and I also like the way it works with the scale like finally now I've achieved something that I've always wanted to achieve was the scaleness of the trees to trains like the large trees I mean I think a lot of times we underestimate the height of trees because this tree here is only 120 well it's about 130 feet high and it's 18 inches right 140 feet so and the trees around here that I modeled these after are 180 feet. So, you know, they're still short by that standard. Anyway, I'm really happy with the whole perspective, how it's viewing as I move further to the right. And the more I look at the layout, um, I can see that the time that I've spent has uh, given back some of its rewards, like in terms of composition, thinking it through, taking my time, but staying consistent. Okay. Um, can you spot the eagle? The eagle is actually right up here. Let me just pan up a bit for you. There he is, see? And there won't be any pigeons. <laughs> there won't be any pigeons present on the layout right now. Anyway. I was thinking of modeling some pigeons, but you know, you never know, right? they might come, but with the eagle around, they're not going to feel too welcome. So, um, and you can see that I've added the photo here, just in closing. Um, and I'm working on a tree over here that'll be coming out of this planter here to transition to the photo. I really like the way it transitions on the left here. You can't even tell, like the, there's, there's 3D foliage here, but I darkened it down with the airbrush. Another reason why I love the airbrush, you can mix your colors and, and, and adjust things. So you can see the transition is almost flawless there from the 3D to the 2D. And I'm going to attempt the same thing on the right there um, with this tree that's on the roof there. I haven't finished yet, but I have a little featurette for that one. Okay, so. And then the cell tower, of course, I've moved all the way to the right. Uh, if you want to see that, it's just the way that it is. I have no space for it anymore. And I thought it might not look bad in the corner there, actually. A couple of smaller trees in front of it or whatever. So I'm pretty happy with that anyway. So, okay. So what I'm going to do is just uh, tack on the tutorial part of the making of uh, the old growth trees here. Um, and just in closing, I'd just like to say I, I, I certainly did not master it because I don't think it can be done. I don't think you can master trees. They're just way too complicated. They are, like, out of all the models I've built, I think that I've been the most challenged by trying to build an accurate, you know, like Douglas fir tree or something. Like, we just take them for granted. They are very difficult to model realistically but you know what though you don't really have to because these trees here i really like these sort of generic ones that i did with the 3m spray glue and i overloaded them with uh static grass i actually really like these you know like the amount of work between these three and these ones is like five to one you know so there you have it right the odd one mixed in looks good though okay so yeah, just a quick shout out to all the channels and the blogs and so on that have, uh, and I think the NMRA also uh, mentioned uh, Boomer Dioramas. I appreciate that. Um, just hope that everyone's getting something out of it. And um, thank you to all my latest subscribers that have just subbed recently. Thank you for all my long-term subscribers. And thank you to all the viewers that just pop in and uh, you know, don't want to subscribe either. I get that and understand that, and that's okay. You're all welcome, and I appreciate all of your support and your views. So looking forward to the next update, and I hope that you have a great day. Okay, the eagle has landed, so I'll show you how I did the eagle. 
I just built the little eagle armature right onto the tree, okay? So just say this is the tree, modeled like this. And then this is the wire, in this case, 22 gauge. Okay. So I just took some 28 gauge copper wire like this. And before I actually built this up with fiber paste, I just wrap it like this. And then I come down, I just leave a loop for the tail, wrap a couple more times, go up for a body. Come back down, wrap once or twice across. You can go back up this way a couple times and then just make a loop and then you can bend it later with pliers like that. Okay. It, like it doesn't have to be a model out of wire. You just want something to hold the, the actual model on the limb. So no matter, no, no matter how many times you whack it and bend it when you're dressing the tree, you're not going to lose your little eagle friend, right? Okay. So I would do it something like this. If this is the limb, and I would take a piece of wire like this. I'll do it a little bit larger for you. Just wrap it down like that. Then a couple of wraps. Do a, a tail like so. And then a body loop. Just another loop like this. Kind of like the way you do the branches in the previous episodes, right? And then I'm going to wrap it up a couple times. Just to bulk up, you know... Um, just to bulk up some of the area that you're going to lay putty over top. Right? We're just going to build it up with fiber paste, right? Then you can just like shape it with one strand. Like you don't want to take that back down again. Nothing fancy, right? Actually, what you probably really want here. You can leave a little bit of it off too, like a little branch as well, like so. So we want a little woodstock guy, right? <laughs> Just like that. And then we'll come at it later with some fiber paste or even extra heavy molding paste. Works as well. And then we'll just build it up with layers. Okay, so our little Woodstock Eagles mounted there on the wire here, as you see. And for those of you that are tuning in late to the game and have missed the series, and you're wondering about how I did all these limbs, you got to go back and watch the previous episodes. I show it basically how it's done. It's pretty simple. You, once you drill holes and add all these limbs, I didn't wind the wire up the dowel. I didn't use that particular method like the small thin trees like like this, right? That's how I did this one. But these are wooden tapered dowels with a little hand plane and I drill holes and I just insert the limbs right through. I drill right through the tree and then run one on each side and then I have the odd single one here and there. I just glue them in with CA super glue. And then I just take the uh, fiber paste by golden and I just with a larger brush obviously paint paint the whole tree down wet it down add a bit of water just start painting it and building up a little bit around the limbs just having fun right you don't have to build all the limbs up just the major ones down below here the larger ones I like this one that the eagles perched on so I just taken some fiber paste here and I added a little bit of water to it so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to fill in the tail here like that, see? And again, like, I'm only after the impression. Like, I'm not into doing a high-fidelity bald eagle here. Um, you know, I've done quite a few bald eagles back in the day. On a larger scale, it's a different story altogether. So I'm just going to build up. You can sand and knife this stuff later when it's dry, too. You can even use some of the Tamiya acrylics that are out there as well. 
If you add a bit of water to this though, you can play around with it for a while. little raptor sitting up there looking for a lone trout slipping across a shallow shoal waiting to dive down and have lunch okay okay so uh, everybody's all geared up and ready to go so you've watched hopefully some of the previous content to get a feel for what's going on here. Very similar to these uh, smaller sapling type or whatever. I mean this would, might be a sapling in O scale but then it's a larger tree in HO but you know what I mean. This is kind of what we're after now. We're going to be dressing the 12 millimeter static grass onto these limbs here. And so what we're going to do is we're going to move some of these out of the way and like I said before you know because they're made of wire and the fiber paste is flexible. You can uh, bend these out of the way and the fiber paste is not going to crack off all right it's going to stay okay i mean don't get overly aggressive with it but it's you know um, i've bent it and reefed it and it you know it, it stays put so we're going to just deal with this one branch here with the five or six secondary limbs on it and we're going to take um let's see if i can get this other one out of the way here for you So we're going to take some of this carpenter's glue, diluted 50% with water. And I guess we'll just we're do three at a time here, I guess. So we just want to just hit the end of these limbs. We're going to leave this old sort of um, lower limb with a little more wood exposed. Okay. So we just want to make sure that I wet that down good. And I'm going to take some of this 12 millimeter static grass, okay, and I'm just going to stab some of it on over top like this. Just lay it on, just like that. See? Okay, so let's just take a spin at some of the uh, lower limbs here you'll see okay, remember how I talked about thatch in the earlier episodes now we don't want to build up thatch like this with layers of different uh, fiber but when we lay on the initial coat like a lot of this is going to fall away probably 70 percent of this but I apply it on like thatch like this to keep it level across the branches like let me just show you here an example like like right here like if you want them to the limbs to kind of go this way not up and down then you just sort of lay across three like thatch it on like that okay that way it, it'll lay horizontal on the branches and that's what you want right so that when it dries well this is probably already dry now but then you just knock a lot of it away to be, be reused again and then you get this nice cross spanning little branches right that's kind of what you want in the first layer anyway okay Okay, so this is uh, three sisters, the old growth trees, 
um, painted with the base colors before the flocking. I just wanted you to see the profile of what it looks like, how much flocking is on there, okay? There's the three trees on the one little base, right? Like so. Basically went with um, flat black and red brown too, XF1 and XF90. And I mixed 25% XF90 into XF1 black, just to get a black brown, which I call rail brown. Okay. Painted the whole tree that color. And then I dusted it over with some XF52 flat earth. And then another little dusting over with buff XF57. It's all about layers, right? And then I did the lower extremities of the trunk and so on with XF12 JN Gray. JN Gray's got sort of a little bit of green in it. So, but anyway, probably you could use Sky Gray as well. So that's what I did for that. And then I'll put a wash on here. Like a red-brown wash because Douglas fir has sort of reddish kind of brown inside the grain of the tree. And then I'll do a little dry brushing down below and dry brushing on these root areas and uh, do a bit of grass flocking down below there. Okay, so now I'm going to apply 4 millimeter dark green static grass onto the 12 mil and the 7 mil that's been glued on in two layers and then airbrushed dark brown with some earth tone. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to apply that on all the boughs or limbs. Okay. That'll be stage three for flocking. Four mil grass onto here. I'll do a bit just now just to show you for those of you that maybe missed some of it. Okay, so I just now, someone mentioned about spraying this glue, and that would be a good idea, too, in some situations. But with a feature tree like this, I want to control where the flocking goes and what it sticks to. And if you spray it, you're going to have a really tough time because when you drop the flocking onto the limbs, it's going to, wherever there's glue, it's going to grab it. And that's where it's going to stick. And so, because this tree is really sort of a, feature tree right i want to control the adhesive in this case diluted matte medium 50 50 with water i want to control where it goes i don't want it on these limbs here i want these limbs to be to stand out and show okay because these are older heavier limbs on the bottom of the tree Why matte medium over carpenter's glue? Well, I have it available here and it has a nice flat finish to it, whereas carpenter's glue can tend to have a little bit of a satiny kind of finish to it at times. Uh, but that's splitting hairs, right? Or fibers in this case. And uh, I'm just going to go with it right now because it seems to have a longer working time in the tray as well. Okay? So I'm just going to. Once again, wire limbs, we can bend them out of the way. Okay. Uh, probably want to get some on the bottom there. Okay, so I've laid on some two millimeter with the shaker here. And you can see how it's uh, pretty much uh, brought the uh, conifer boughs to where I really want them. It worked out really well. See, so, you know, the layers and the slow modeling approach pays off, right? With a nicer looking tree, doesn't it? 
you know, you get what you put into it. And uh, in this case, these three trees are going to be a real feature on the layout over by the grain elevators where she's going to be and the three sisters, right? And uh, I haven't done the eagle yet. The eagle is right here. I haven't painted it yet. And, she's... and then I'll touch it up with a brush and some few washes and a bit of dry brushing and then flock the ground area. And I'm pretty happy with that. This tree, once it's you know, brought to a little more shape, which I can do with the limbs. I can bend and move them around. Okay.